meniscal extrusion is a phenomenon seen in degenerative posterior front tears, radial tears and the root tears where the body of the meniscus is displaced medially from the tibial ring. The paramount function of the meniscus is to distribute load across the knee joint. The root tear and meniscal extrusion will cause failure of this function and eventually lead to progression of osteoarthritis. Arthroscopic meniscal extrusion repair has been suggested to reduce the meniscal extrusion along with the root repair. And there are various techniques to address this uh, extrusion correction by using dual, dual tunnel suture pull-up technique, using knotless suture anchors or you can use all inside suture anchor repair. The indications for extrusion repair are not consistently reported in the literature and the procedure is not always easy to perform. Currently, there is no consensus regarding the ideal technique of meniscal extrusion repair and with the centralization. In this article, we describe the steps for a successful combined medial meniscus root repair with extrusion correction that is centralization. Medial meniscus root repair with the transtibial suture pull-up technique may not completely restore meniscal extrusion. Hence, additional procedures like meniscal centralization procedures may be required to reduce the meniscus mid-body onto the medial tibial rim. The rationale of this combined procedure is to restore hoop stress distribution and maintain the meniscal function by repairing extrusion of the meniscus. First step is to perform arthroscopic repair of the medial meniscus root tear by transtibial suture pull-up technique followed by meniscal centralization using a double loaded all suture anchor through an additional mid medial portal which reduces the mid body of the meniscus on the tibial rim plateau. This gives robust strength of the repair and reduces the meniscus within the tibial rim. Meniscus root repair with the centralization is indicated for isolated root tears or radial tears of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus with extrusion of 3 to 5 mm and associated with the grade 1 to 2 cartilage lesions. This can be also done in ACL reconstruction with the root tears and also in varus knees when we do with the combination of high tibial osteotomy. This procedure is contraindicated when associated with the cartilage lesions of grade 3 or 4 ICRS or kissing lesions. The specific steps in performing this procedure consists of meticulous preoperative planning, positioning of the patient, portal making, arthroscopic medial meniscus root repair, centralization suture for meniscal extrusion correction, closure and curated post-operative rehab protocol. A thorough physical examination is performed with imaging including weight-bearing anteroposterior and lateral radiographs of the knee, coronal alignment radiographs to assess the varus, as well as MRI to confirm the root tear, assess the extrusion and to analyze the cartilage status. Patient is positioned supine with a lateral thigh support against a tunique and foot supported on a leg holder that maintains knee in 90 degree flexion. The assistant can then give algus to open up the affected medial compartment using the lateral thigh support as a counter. At first, diagnostic arthroscopy is performed using standard arthroscopic portals. A high anterolateral portal will be used as a viewing portal while low anteromedial portal along with an additional mid-medial portal made about 1 to 2 cm medial to the anteromedial portal will be used as working portals. Proceeding with arthroscopy, the ACL was normal in our case. A 16 gauge needle is used to perform MCL by cresting a tibial attachment. This opens up the medial compartment and aids in repairing the root as well as extrusion correction and also it prevents any hydrogenic cartilage damage. Next step would be to repair of the torn meniscus using transtibial suture pull-up technique. For this, tibial surface is first prepared using a curette just medial to the attachment of the posterior root. Reducibility of the tear to the native insertion site is checked using a grasper. This is important as non-anatomic repair can result in altered knee biomechanics. In case of extensive scarring and extrusion, partial lease of the root may be necessary. In our case, root was easily reducible to its native anatomy site. For creating the transtibial tunnel, an ACL jig set in 50 degrees and is placed over the posterior root area and reamed with a 4.5 cannulated reamer over a kite pin. Following this, bites are taken of the posterior horn of the middle meniscus with a knee scorpion 
using two non absorbable suture tape with cinch knots these sutures are then shuttled across the tibia using the suture retriever knot tying is done after centralization Persisting extrusion despite a root repair necessitates meniscal centralization. This can be done using double loaded all suture anchor. A 16 gauge needle is inserted initially at the proposed mid medial portal to ascertain the location of the mid medial portal and also to assess the direction and angle of inclination during suture anchor insertion. Portal site is enlarged using a lavanum blade. and a double loaded all suture anchor is inserted at the edge of the medial tibial plateau a straight lasso is used to take the capsular bite the needle loop and one blue fiber wire is settled out of the anteromedial portal The fiber wire is passed through the loop outside the knee and then shuttled back through the mid body mid medial portal. The similar procedure is repeated with the second white fiber fiber wire. Knots for centralization are tied via the mid medial portal to secure the meniscus to the tibial rim. Both the limbs of the fiber wire should be shuttled from inside out. 